Uh, so I'm going to be responding to the claim that plastic bottle bottles are causing an abundance of harm. So the first claim was that plastic bottles are a huge country contributor to pollution because they're not biodegradable and people do not take the initiative to recycle them, which ends up with the bottles ending up in the landfills. So first of all, according to the EPA, plastic bottled water containers make up only one third of one percent of the U.S. waste stream. So saying that they're a huge contributor is a large exaggeration, and so that's so that's inaccurate. And according to the National Association for PET Container Resources, uh, recycling rates for single serve PET plastic water bottle containers have more than doubled in the last eight years, because uh, now most water bottles and stuff are made from PET rather than plastic that contains BPA. Um, second, uh, my opponent claimed that plastic bottles contain a chemical called the bisphenol A or BPA, which can cause serious health issues. She also said that 93% of Americans 6 and over have been exposed to BPA. So from the FDA's website, uh, based on FDA's ongoing safety review of scientific evidence, the available information continues to support the safety of BPA for the currently approved uses in food containers and packaging. So what the FDA is saying is basically that BPA is safe in all its uses currently, and so uh, there's no danger in having bisphenol A in the plastic bottles, and saying that it causes serious health issues is inaccurate. And also, as I said before, now most, most plastic bottles, bottles are made from PT rather than plastic that contains BPA, and so saying that it contains BPA is irrelevant. Uh, the third claim that she made was that Plastic bottles are very costly, and the Americans spent $21.7 billion on bottled beverages in 2011. Also, she said that manufacturing plastic bottles has caused an increase in oil and natural gas prices. So first of all, when she says that Americans spend $21.7 billion on bottled beverages, um, that's also irrelevant because it doesn't, because when you buy bottled beverages, you're not just paying for the bottle, you're also paying for the drink. So without any actual Without any more information, you can't actually have anything to compare it to and tell whether it's ex actually expensive or not for paying for those beverages. Um, and as for the statement that manufacturing plastic bottles has caused an increase in oil and natural gas prices, so I, s I looked at the uh, website that she got this information from, and they didn't cite source, so I was looking around, and apparently the, uh, the website says that the it, manufacturing the bottles uh, requires the equivalence of 17 million barrels of crude oil, and so the prices increase. Uh, so I looked around, and apparently that statement is usually attributed to researchers at the University of Louisville, except uh, the university itself never says that they've never heard about that. And the university's director of media relations, named Mark Hebert, says that. We don't have anyone who ever wrote about 17 million barrels of oil used to make PET water bottles. We have no idea where the University of Louisville researchers has come from. We've asked all our environmental guides, our researchers in an engineering school, and nobody has touched that one. So that information without a source can't be seen as accurate or relevant, and so cannot be used to prove the claim. So overall, the information that was used to try and prove that plastic bottles are causing an abundance of harm is uh, both irrelevant and inaccurate, and so cannot be used to prove the point at all. Yeah, that's all. Thank you.
All right, Daniel, I thought that you labeled the uh, advocate's main claim pretty clearly. The secondary issues were okay also. Uh, when you got to that first point, you had a pretty clear response on what you were saying, um, but uh, <clears throat> I think your, your phrasing should be a little bit simpler. In other words, you know, it comes down to that this is not really a significant part of the environmental problem. Uh, you can keep it relatively simple. I like the statistic that you had, though. I thought that that does a good job trying to diminish the importance of that. Uh, the recycling rate, I think, is also a good point to try and diminish the importance of what the advocate's talking about. I, I noticed something that you did in most of your arguments, and it's probably uh, not something that seems obvious to you, but from a communication point of view, it's usually uh, better to do it the other way. You have a tendency to present your evidence and then tell us what that evidence means. You want to do it in the other direction. Give us the inference first, make that declarative sentence, and then present the evidence that supports that so it's just clearer from an oral communication perspective. <clears throat> As I'm listening, I think all of your responses apply, and I think you've got good evidence on those arguments. But as a, as a presentation, like I said, I think it needs to be clear, and that's why we need those declarative sentences to be up front. Uh, and, and I think it will be more powerful that way. Um, and like I said, I thought you had good evidence on some of those issues. Uh, the uh, declining use of BPA did need some, some additional information. Um, you basically used the FDA uh, safety standards. That was okay. Uh, but uh, like I said, you also said it's declining in use, and I didn't really hear a source citation on that. On the cost issue, basically this comes down to an argument about the credibility of the evidence that the advocate's using. And you've got a pretty good set of arguments here that suggest that this is a random number that has just been repeated by people in this field and is being passed around, and uh, it's being used without any legitimacy. And I think that's uh, probably a reasonable press on this. Um, in the end, uh, you are saying that uh, it, so it's not acceptable to use it as evidence to reach those conclusions. I'm, I'm willing to concede that that might be the truth. I think you need to make one more argument here, and that is whether or not, whether or not the cost issue is the thing that we ought to be worrying about, since the advocate's claim is mostly focused on environmental dangers. You know, whether how much it costs, well, how is that relevant anyway? But I like the fact that you went to the extra effort to find something to kick around their statistic with. All right, thank you.